Manx Radio's update with Dave Moore. The time is half five. You're listening to Manx Radio. I am Dave Moore and this is Update. Welcome to the programme. Half an hour of the latest news in the Isle of Man, plus Manx sport, business, travel updates, along with the newsmakers in person. Coming up... There's a spike in the number of COVID patients being admitted to Nobles Hospital. All the island's pharmacies will be allowed to dispense medicinal cannabis imminently. And changes have been made to the offences people could face under proposed assisted dying laws. And Manx tennis player Billy Harris is into the last four at Eastbourne. That's all coming up in the next half hour. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. But first of all, at 5.31, the update news headlines with Christian Jones. Faster my. Faster my. Manx Care is reintroducing masks in all medical settings due to an increase in the number of patients admitted to Nobles Hospital with coronavirus. The health body has confirmed to Manx Radio and as of this evening, 12 patients are in hospital with the virus. Anyone who coerces someone into agreeing to assisted dying will face a custodial sentence after politicians agree to new changes. Those convicted will now face up to 14 years in jail should the assisted dying bill be brought into law. And Manx pro tennis player Billy Harris will face Australian qualifier Max Purcell in the semi-finals of the Eastbourne International tomorrow. Harris won in three sets against Italian opponent Flavio Cobello. Cobber Bailey on Centre Court this afternoon. And the Steam Packet Company has confirmed this evening's quarter past eight trip to Hesham will go ahead as planned. The Manxman sailing was cast into doubt earlier due to forecast adverse weather conditions. In international news, the UK Health Security Agency says one person has died linked to the ongoing E. coli outbreak. Experts believe the infection was spread via lettuce leaves. And Rishi Sunak has repeatedly refused to say whether he told his parliamentary aides when he told when he told the general election. Craig Williams is being investigated for betting on the date of the July poll. Those are the update news headlines next at six. Secure tomorrow today with Man Benham's guidance on powers of attorney and more. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Largely cloudy with occasional showers, these merging into longer spells of rain at times before mainly clearing through the overnight period. Windy with a strong and gusty west-southwest wind and a minimum temperature of 10 Celsius. Drier and brighter tomorrow with sunny intervals developing at times, fresh to strong west-southwest wind to start. This gradually backing southwest and decreasing moderate, maximum temperature 16 Celsius. Often cloudy on Saturday, with the risk of an area of rain affecting the island for a time. Light and variable winds and a top temperature then of 16 Celsius. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Manx Care is reintroducing masks in all medical settings due to an increase in the number of patients admitted to Nobles Hospital with coronavirus. The Deputy Chief Executive and Director of Nursing, Paul Merles, confirmed as of this evening 12 patients are in hospital with the virus. He says it could take weeks before we start to see a decrease in the number of patients. We need to uh, isolate people who have COVID-19 in hospital. Therefore, of course, we need to minimise as far as possible the spread or transmission of the infection. To do that, we need to reintroduce mask wearing in patient facing areas so uh, the staff you'll notice the staff will be wearing masks when in direct contact with people Uh, and in some situations we need to use um, more advanced personal protective equipment when we're doing certain procedures people visiting hospitals will be asked and encouraged to uh, wear a mask when they come and to wash their hands when they come uh, to help us to minimise the risk. We'll still have visiting and we'll keep the hospital open and try and remain as resilient as possible, but we might uh, need to ask people to wear a mask when they come, wash their hands uh, and, uh, and be aware of the risk at the moment. At this point, it's more of a precaution. The numbers have increased and uh, we, you know, thinking about the 
the progression of COVID, um, it, it could be a few more weeks yet before we uh, see numbers come down. So it's just a, a precaution to allow us to keep all our beds and services open and up and running for people. You're listening to Manx Radio. This is Update. Pharmacies across the island will be able to dispense medicinal cannabis imminently. The Health Minister, Laurie Hooper, told the House of Keys the decision has been made after the conclusion of a pilot scheme. The department has made a series of decisions to support a long-term licensing regime befitting to the needs of the island's population with due considerations to patient accessibility, affordability and safety. The switch to a business-as-usual licensing regime is imminent due to, be, due to be implemented in short order and department officers are finalising an approach that will allow an unrestricted number of registered pharmacies to apply for a licence, therefore enabling the expansion of service provision on the island. To retain within the licence conditions that mean prescribing of CBPM will remain limited to those persons who are permitted on the GMC specialist register. However, they will be enabled to operate private prescribing clinics on the island, provided they are registered with the Department of Health and Social Care's registration and inspection team as an independent medical agency. It's hoped this opportunity offers a more effective and more patient-centric service. We'll be streamlining the licensing and reporting requirements without compromising the island's reporting obligations under the UN Convention of 1961. Uh, We will also see the introduction of six-monthly inspections that will also ensure compliance with reconciliation processes related to the importation and supply of CBPM. Whilst the decision to issue one licence for the duration has helped establish the system, controls that built our confidence in respective governance and quality and safety, the review has not identified any particular risk or substantiated cause for concern that should prevent the Department altering existing (coughs) licence conditions. Further information and guidance to prospective license holders seeking applications for licenses will be available from the week commencing the 8th of July. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Changes have been made to the offences people could face under proposed assisted dying laws. Jane Poole Wilson put forward a new suggestion making it illegal to ignore or conceal a revoked declaration from a patient while Minister Laurie Hooper received support for changing sentencing. I think we all agree that we have said that nobody should be under coercion or pressure uh, in signing a declaration. We've provided for that in the bill. Therefore, if there is a circumstance that were to arise, my amendment is providing that that would be an offence. Um, and, and I accept, you know, we've heard from professionals that this is a difficult area. I think we've had a lot of discussion about what we can do to improve professionals' ability to um, discern coercion. Uh, And I would suggest, honourable members, as I have before, that this wouldn't only apply in the context of this bill and assisted dying, but it would apply in all contexts where somebody is um, at risk of coercion. The uh, offence that I'm talking about here in respect of removing the fines is attempted murder. So that's where you have uh, intentionally tried to uh, cause someone to be administered or to administer to themselves uh, medication that will kill them. So that is attempted murder. So in terms of was this discussed by anybody? Uh, yes, the committee discussed this, actually. There was a, uh, a bit of debate around the table on this, and the committee's uh, conclusions did support amending the clause to clarity, uh, provide some clarity on the offences uh, under the Act, so members can obviously see the committee report where it is. Uh, as to whether or not the length of time someone should serve should be a life sentence, I would go back to the criminal code. It is my favourite piece of legislation on the Isle of Man by any stretch. It is brilliant. Uh, but there are there are some bits in there around the various types of ways people can uh, be convicted of murder on the Isle of Man. They're very specific in some cases, which I would encourage you. If anyone, anyone's got five minutes, go and read some of the offences in the Act. It will blow your mind. Um, so, But the, the actual custodial offence uh, for attempted murder there is imprisonment uh, for up to life, so it is consistent with uh, the other bits of legislation that we have around attempted murder. That was Health Minister Laurie Hooper and Middle MHK Jane Poole-Wilson. Sport, Isle of Man tennis star Billy Harris's recent form continued this afternoon as he reached the semi-finals of the Eastbourne International. He defeated Italian Flavio Caboli in three sets earlier in the last eight. He spoke to BBC Sport after taking victory. Firstly, just want to thank the crowd. Amazing support out there and uh, got me through that last set, so thank you all. Tough conditions, windy conditions, being a... A man from the Isle of Man, do you think that that helped you growing up in the windy conditions? Yeah, I think I think we used to play a lot in the wind, so um, it's obviously frustrating for everyone. But um, yeah, coming from the Isle of Man definitely helped me today. You've had a, a, a great run on grass, Surbiton, and then Queens, and, and now a semi-final here at the Rothsay International. What's your secret on grass? 
I don't know really. I've, I haven't got a secret, but um, I've I've had three three great weeks in a row, and um, just want to continue as much as I can. Just loving it out of here. So you'll be back. You'll be back on centre court tomorrow for a semi-final. How will you get ready for that now? Just rest up, uh, recover, and uh, yeah, watch it, watch some of my next match. So yeah, hope to see you all tomorrow. Manx Radio Business Briefing. Investor in distressed and dysfunctional assets, Adams PLC, blamed elevated trade tensions with China and the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war for posting another loss in its full-year results. The AIM listed investment firm saw its net assets decline from 5.11 million to 4.98 million in the year ending March 31st. And while the performance of its portfolio broke even, the Isle of Man-based firm reported ongoing running costs of £200,000, which meant the firm slipped to an overall loss of 130000 pounds a considerable improvement on its loss of 2.37 million the previous year Earnings at STM Group, which in December last year accepted a bid from Bidco, the acquisition arm of Pension Superfund, rose by 17% last year, according to its audited results, up from 24.1 million to 28.1 million. The rise was attributed to its interest sharing policy and the first full year contribution of its own acquisition of Mercer in 2022. But despite its growth, the Isle of Man based company, which is listed on London's AIM market, saw a substantial drop in reported profit in the year ended December 31st, which fell from 1.6 million in 2022 to 0.4 million last year. The firm's operating margin before other items also fell down from 14% in 2022 to 11% last year. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stocks moved slightly lower as investors faced global inflation worries. Global market attention is shifting towards fresh US inflation data on Friday, with May's Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, the US Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, due to be released. Oil prices edged up as supply disruption risks from rising geopolitical tensions in the Middle East helped to counter demand fears after a surprise build in U.S. stockpiles. Gold prices rose 1% from an over two-week low hit in the previous session as the dollar softened, with the market spotlight on key U.S. inflation data for more cues on the Federal Reserve's interest rate path. On to the markets. The FTSE 100 is at 8.183. That's down 0.51%. The Dow Jones is at 390185, up 0.15%. The Nasdaq is at 17830, up 0.14%. The exchange rates, the pound against the dollar, 1.264, and against the euro, 1.181. Commodities, gold is at 2,326 US dollars, that's up 1.25%. With Brent at 85.23 US dollars, that's up 0.97%. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Crook all later? Oh, uh, no, of, of course not. Um, 5 p.m., is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Unemployment in the Isle of Man fell again last month. The government's just published May's Labour Market Report. Amy Griffiths has been looking at it. A total of 263 people are registered unemployed, with medical and health services, catering and entertainment and retail among the sectors with the highest number of vacancies. Figures for May show an increase of 17 people in comparison to the same period a year ago. However, when comparing to April, it's down by 18. There were also three fewer vacancies at the job centre compared to the previous month and totals at 915. Of these positions, 56% were full-time and the remaining 44 were part-time. The International Labour Organisation estimates 708 people are unemployed and looking for work, which equates to a rate of 1.5%. The ILO figure accounts for not only those who may be registered unemployed, but also those who may be actively looking for work but who haven't registered themselves as out of a job. 
Catering and entertainment, retail and miscellaneous services are among the sectors with the highest number of unemployed people. Almost two-thirds of those registered unemployed were men, and as of March, there are 20 people who are classed as long-term unemployed, which is defined as anyone who has been out of work for a year or longer. Geographically, the East is home to the most unemployed people at 175. The North, South and West sit at 38, 27 and 23 respectively. You can see the report in full at manxradio.com. Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I, good evening. Starting with athletics and Isle of Man athlete Regan Corrin has been selected to compete for Great Britain next month. The Manx Harriers competitor will represent the GB and Northern Ireland side in the high jump at the European Under-18 Championships at Banksa Bystrica in Slovakia from the 18th to the 21st of July. Early this month, Corrin made history in another discipline as he became the first ever Ireland competitor to surpass the 7 metre mark in the long jump on his way to an under-20 silver medal. In the last 12 months, in the high jump, Corin claimed men's gold at the 2023 Ireland Games in Guernsey and won the England under-17 high jump title in Birmingham in August last year. Meanwhile in cycling, Manxman Matthew Bostock has taken his first pro win of the 2024 season this week. The Ribble Rebellion rider took top spot in last night's Otley Grand Prix event ahead of Tech CC competitor Robert Scott, whilst Ribble Rebellion teammate Jim Brown completed the podium in third. Last week, Bostock finished 23rd in the men's circuit race at the British National Road Championships. Elsewhere during this season with his new team, he also finished fourth in the Greenville Cycling Classic in the USA in April and took second in the Eddystone's Memorial Race in the UK in March. And finally, in motorsport, the schedule for next month's Southern 100 road races has now been confirmed. The 2024 meeting on the Balloon course is taking place from the 8th to the 11th of July with 15 races planned across the four days. Evening road closures will be in place on the opening three days with highways around the four and a quarter mile course closing at 6.05pm and reopening no later than 9.40pm. Two sets of closures will then take place on the final day of Thursday the 11th of July. Firstly, with roads around the course closing in the morning at 9.30am until no later than 12.45pm. Highways will then briefly reopen before shutting again for the afternoon session at 1.30pm and reopening for the final time no later than 4.45pm. The Southern 100 Club advises all closure and session times may be subject to change, possibly at short notice. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Let's begin with ferry crossings and the Mananin was due to leave Liverpool this evening at quarter past seven. Uh, it's now going at an estimated time of quarter to eight due to the tidal conditions in the Mersey. So um, the Manxman should be departing at quarter past eight from Douglas tonight uh, to Hisham. That's still going on time. So let's head down to Rollsway to the airport and the latest information from there. And the departures, Liverpool, Logan Air is due to go at six o'clock. Uh, the Manchester, which was due to leave the EasyJet service at 5.30, is now showing as half past six. Also, the EasyJet to Gatwick, which was due to go at five to eight, is now going at quarter past nine. In terms of the arrivals, the Manchester five o'clock, which was due in the EasyJet flight, is now showing as six o'clock. The London Gatwick Easy Jet flight, which was due at 25 past seven, is now due to arrive at quarter to nine, while the five to eight Logan Air flight from Liverpool is showing on time. And nothing of significance on the roads either. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre, with one year's free engine warranty from Castro. Get more with... Keyside. Automatic number plate recognition is on the way and the Department of Home Affairs says the UK's approach to ANPR will be adopted but adapted as needed for the Isle of Man. Earlier this month, the Isle of Man Constabulary said it was working with government and law enforcement agencies to strengthen the security of the island. This, Chief Constable Russ Foster said, was with a view to preventing and detecting crime. And in the House of Keys this week, Justice and Home Affairs Minister Jane Paul Wilson confirmed her department is supporting that aim by confirming ANPR is on the way. It is important to say that the Chief Constable views ANPR primarily as a valuable intelligence tool to target serious criminality rather than solely as a tool to detect motoring offences or enforce road traffic legislation. This aligns with our aims to keep our island safe 
targeting those who attempt to come to our island to traffic drugs or people. But she couldn't be specific about when it will happen. At this stage, I'm not able to commit to a, a, a fixed time for when we will bring the order forward. But as this pertains to a priority in our island plan about securing our ports of entry, uh, it is a priority for the department. And so this work is active and we will seek to progress it as quickly as we can. AMPR is primarily seen by the Chief Constable as a valuable intelligence tool to target serious criminality and its deployment will be in line with that aim, but it's also possible that it could be used for other types of, uh, of criminality. And ultimately, the deployment of AMPR technology is an operational matter for the Chief Constable. Tessa Hawley with that report, and she has another one now about a Douglas man who's been remanded at the Isle of Man prison after trying to bring drugs into the island concealed in a plant pot. Aaron Mark Glover of Oak Hill Court appeared at Douglas Courthouse today. The 34-year-old was stopped by police at the sea terminal on the 18th of June. Officers searched his Mercedes and found the pot in the boot. It had been sealed to look like a candle, but when they deconstructed it, they found a number of Class A and Class B substances. This included 328 grams of cocaine, which had a street value of almost £47,000, and 499 grams of ketamine, which had a street value of between £19,000 and £24,000. There was also 27 grams of MDMA crystal valued at just over £1,000 and 100 MDMA pills. In court, Glover admitted four offences of unlawfully producing drugs to the Isle of Man and four of possessing the substances with intent to supply. The court heard receipts were found in the vehicle which showed the plant pot and a number of candles had been purchased the day before he travelled. Rubber gloves, glue and other items used to construct the makeshift candle were also recovered. Glover will be sentenced at the Court of General Jail Delivery. He'll next appear there on the 12th of July. There was no application for bail. Tessa Hawley with that report. You're listening to Manx Radio. This is Update. And a new boating festival in Peel is being introduced to fill the gap left by the traditional boat weekend. The event finished last year after running since 1990. It's being replaced by Peel Sea Fest as Commodore Roger Kay from Peel Sailing Club and event coordinator Sue Taylor explain. For over 30 years, we used to host the Trad Boat Weekend. And fortunately, the Trad Boat numbers are declining, as are the sailors of Trad Boats. The committee that ran that event did a fantastic job for over 30 years. They're having a rest. We thought, well, we can't let this just disappear entirely. So we decided to come up with the Peel Sea Fest for not only trad boats, but contemporary boats. And it's to do with everything nautical that we can think of and cram in to a weekend at the end of July. Uh, it's not that they don't want to be involved with them, but uh, trad boats uh, take a lot of money, time, and maintenance. A lot of them are very, very old and they can't withstand the rigours of coming across the Irish Sea, for instance, if they're coming from Ireland or Scotland. And the same with the actual people who sail them. It's a, almost a dying sport, if you like. We've invited not only the traditional boats over, we've been in contact with all the clubs across in Ireland, Scotland, North Wales, and we've encouraged all sea craft. So not just traditional boats, but other boats, cruisers, yachts as well. And the way we've designed the Peel Sea Fest is to encourage people to come to Peel, to involve all the businesses across Peel, because the festival will be at the same time as the Celtic Gathering, and we will be hosting some of the bands, actually, within the sailing club as well. And when is this then? When can we come along and see Peel at its finest in hopefully glorious weather, fingers crossed? Oh, we're going to book the weather. (laughs) Um, 26th to the 28th of July. A charity has funded a bespoke room in the new Liverpool ferry terminal. Julie Stokes is the chair of Manx Breast Cancer Support Group that spent £20,000 for a patient quiet room there. 
We started this probably in about 2017, 2018, and we started off with Liverpool, John Lennon Airport, and we managed to, to secure a sort of a quiet room, a small area which we could make a quiet room. It was quite a difficult job to get it, and that's run really successfully since then. So we moved on, we got one at Ronalds Way Airport, and then now we've just got the sea terminal. It's very small, but at least it's quiet. It's not just about people using patient transfer. Obviously, we like to link it up to them, but we, you know, it's about people who just generally aren't. You know, if you're not well, you know, you're more than welcome to use that facility. Loads and loads of people have had treatments and, 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 and it makes them feel sick. It makes them feel queasy. And so for that reason, you know, it's great to just have a little bit of space. Sometimes people are waiting quite some time for their travel home. So they need it. They need it. And how much does it cost to make a room like this? A lot more than you think, actually. <laughs> around around the £20,000 mark for building works and bits and bobs and, of course, furnishings. That's funded by the Manchester Cancer Support Group, yes. And it's been a really expensive project building this new terminal. Do you think that facilities like that should have rooms like this in them as standard for people to be able to use without needing to be fundraised by a charity? Yes, I suppose in an ideal world, yes, they should do really. DOI have been extremely helpful and supportive through this. But yes, it's a shame that charities do have to fund this kind of thing. But, you know, hey ho, as long as we get it and as long as patients get that facility, that's all that matters. And that's it for update for today. Compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department, thank you newsreader Christian Jones and producer Amy Griffiths. And if you have a comment on the news agenda or a story you think we should be covering or just want to say hi, from near or far, email update at manxradio.com. And the stories you've heard on this update and much more Manx news, plus interviews and podcasts and the web's biggest source of Manx videos are all at manxradio.com and via the free Manx Radio app. And it's always worth liking Manx Radio on Facebook or following us on X. And subscribing to the Manx Radio YouTube channel. And don't forget, Update is the Isle of Man's most subscribed to news podcast. If you know someone who you think would enjoy this, get them to download the app. Or at manxradio.com, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>